Questa non è solo la storia di Ernest Hemingway, Nobel per la letteratura nel 1954. È anche una ricerca sul suo mondo, il mondo geografico, politico e umano. Una ricerca sul suo cosiddetto suicidio. Ma fu vero suicidio? A questa domanda in molti avrebbero potuto rispondere poiché anche in troppi erano a conoscenza di questa facile ma tragica verità. Mary Welsh, sua quarta moglie, sapeva. Gli agenti della CIA sapevano. Margot, la prima nipote, sapeva. E lo sapevano i servizi segreti russi, tedeschi, cubani e israeliani. Il segreto ormai è custodito nelle ossa di tutti coloro che oggi riposano in pace. Basta, ah, Hemingway, eh, accidente. E perché tu lo leggi e dici, sì, ma l'uomo, Hemingway, eh, la sua fine, eh, lui non l'avrebbe mai immaginata, evidentemente. E però è davvero un... è più di un romanzo, è una, è una tragedia, perché ci hanno costruito sopra tutta una storia che non regge, ma come fa a essersi ucciso? Io poi di armi, ma intendo, non poteva spararsi da... e non capiremo mai probabilmente com'è stato, ma certo, ci ha messo le mani qualcuno, diciamo la CIA, vabbè la CIA è un riferimento, ma insomma era diventato pericoloso e eh? anche uno scrittore può diventare pericoloso. Lui non era mai uguale. Una volta morto, non sai più se aveva la barba o i baffi, se era rosso di capelli o bianco o grigio. La sua faccia cambiava sempre. Oggi non è più lo stesso. Il suo corpo non è più lo stesso. Ernest e tutti quelli che lo imitano con parole sue e i suoi pensieri. Parigi, al tempo di Hemingway, era il tempio, se non l'inferno, in verità il paradiso e il crocevia della cultura di tutto il mondo. James Joyce, Anais Nin, Marlene Dietrich, Henry Miller riempivano i caffè parigini del loro superbo stile. E Parigi era una grande festa, la festa mobile di Ernest Miller Hemingway. There was more to that, but uh, I think really we got us uh, a little taste of that movie. We need a narration from you we to tell us what was going on. We just need a translator, right? <laughs> yeah, lost in translation, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. and, and I had a question for you. And that was a hot air balloon. Did you see that one? I, I kind of blinked, but that's okay. It's your women, drink talking, right? And no, women <laughs> blink twice as much as men do. Did you know that? No. Hey, guys, could we have a camera on the people yeah, talking? Right. That's good. <laughs> good idea. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I... Uh, There, I have a question. Both you and Bruce, where would you sit for eternity, smoking or non-smoking? Uh, smoking I don't know. or non-smoking? Maybe smoking. <laughs> Why? Because it's more fun, right? It's just a question. If you had a choice, would you They be don't sitting have in the smoking. They don't have smoking anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be in this room drinking coffee. <laughs> oh, no, you don't, because then yeah, that's just the break. You'd have to stand on your head. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Okay, now what was your question again? If you had a choice, right. 
for eternity, right. where would you go, smoking or not smoking? What are we smoking? It depends. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, Bruce. That well, is the correct response. The, the, exactly. But in, in, a, in a smoking room, at least you're going to meet some really cool I know, people. But what are we smoking well, in that room? Well, that's what you don't know. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, I'll take and, the smoking then. Oh, definitely. I would too. Because when you you're dead, you're dead, right? Exactly. So, so who cares if you're going to have you're smoking, uh, right? dying from cancer? It's not going to happen because you're already dead. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense, right? <clears throat> Yes, yes, Stella, that's very logical. Flawlessly <laughs> logical. <laughs> Flawlessly logical? What is that? <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> Me neither, because you brought up this I should, flawless... I should introduce you to the queen one day. I think I'll be meeting her on my own. I heard she's me. Indian. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yes, because uh, Queen she? Victoria, okay. her grandmother, she was, was the, the Empress, Empress of, of India. India. <laughs> they all live in the same house. They intermarry, <laughs> right? Everybody is Indian. And they're in the family uh, business. Pre-arranged marriages, uh, except for Charles, because if he was Indian, his ears would be small. He's African. <laughs> He's African. <laughs> <laughs> He's African. And brought to you by National Geographic, yes. Anyway, that's some viral video that's going around. It's pretty funny. Okay, so about. anyways, yeah, let's get back I to get to Paris, <coughs> and like I go to this bar, and it's like 10 o'clock at night, and they close it. So I'm no. going like, like, this is Paris? Aren't the bars open all night? You're in Paris, right? No, 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 this bar closed at 10. So I'm going like, where am I going to go? So one guy that was sitting beside me, just walk down that way, and you'll find a bar open, right? So I'm walking down. <clears throat> and I see this one bar on the right, and it has a guitar. And I go, okay, fine, I'll go in this bar. So I go in this bar, I go, sorry, we're closed. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> no. So I go in the bar, and I go, and I flick my, my thumb across the guitar, and I go, it's in tune. Then I said, oh, do you mind if I play your guitar? He said, sure. So I played a couple songs. And then... Um, How convenient yeah, that it was in tune. Yeah, then he closed. <laughs> Then <coughs> I told him I'd come back the next day. So I came back the next day, and I brought, I, I'm bad with names, Romwell Klaus, who is the, um, in the movie, he's the KGB uh, guy, right? But uh, I'm not supposed to know who he is, right? So I bring him there the next night, because he wants to hear me play guitar, because I'm doing a filming part in Paris about the guitar part. So I bring him to the bar, and I say to the owner, can I play your guitar? He says, sure, great, no problem. Now, he knew I was coming back the next day because I told him I was. So I pick up the guitar, I play a couple songs. Everybody, you know, I was really amazed, loved my songs. Like, they're going, like, you know, and I'm thinking, now this is planned. So anyways, these people came up to me. His name, I'm bad with names, Erwin, I think, C-E-D-I-C, -E and this C other girl who was really, really nice. I like her, too. Uh, I'll get her name after. Sorry. Cecil. 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 So, so they come up and they go, oh, you're filming and blah, blah. I says, yeah, well, no, what are you doing here? So I'm filming and blah, blah, blah. And she says, oh, why don't you come to our place because we, that's what we do. And I go, okay, great. So next thing you know, I go to their place with Rum Walt, the KGB guy, right? And we go in and we go, this is fantastic. Maybe Giuseppe would like to film here. So we phone Giuseppe. Giuseppe comes over and sure enough, he loved the location, and next day we, we filmed, right? Okay. Tell us, please, a little bit about the world of Hemingway, because it's obviously an international audience film. Right. And I would like to know what, you know, basically, if you can give me a synopsis of the movie and what we're supposed to know about this, that would be great. So take it, take it away. <laughs> what's that? Winna, Winna, what's a, Winna, what, how do they pronounce that name? Wikipedia or something? Wikipedia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What just, about it? Yeah, just Google it, and you'll find out everything you want to know. No, you know no, what? No, you're supposed. You're no. here to tell us. What <laughs> no, the hell are you talking no, about? No, this guy is so unbelievable. Like he, like he, he was like in the Italian War. Like he delivered chocolates and cigarettes to the front in Italy, and he got, you know, shot and wounded. You know, like I mean Hemingway was like unbelievable. Like, like the guy was like. And to write all these books and go through all this this torment, mm. like 
So th this is about Ernest Hemingway. Right. A and he had, I guess, kind of a tortured soul. I'll tell you, if you read that, what I read, it's unbelievable. And how could he write these books? And you know something? He used to like fishing a lot in, um, <laughs> this is not funny, but I was thinking of this. In, in Cuba, this one he used to love fishing all the time. But guess what? I found out he had 20 cats. So I think he was <laughs> fishing the fish for the cats. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, they about. were healthy cats. No kidding. And one of his uh, daughters, his son actually, Hemingway was also a writer for the Toronto Star. And in Paris, he did a lot of correspondence. He did like 88. And Wait also a minute. Back up. Ernest Hemingway. Yeah. Beep, he wrote for beep, the, he wore. <laughs> <laughs> for the Toronto Star. He wrote for the Toronto Star? Yes. Smart ass. <laughs> yeah, he did. And you know something else? Very good, Hugh. One of his sons was actually born in Toronto, Canada. Ernest really? Hemingway's son. And Muriel Hemingway was it is named his granddaughter, after, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And she was named the son that was born in Toronto. She was named after the port where Ernest and Cuba always went fishing every day. Muriel. Wow. Wow. Interesting. And now there's a bar in Toronto called Hemingways up in Yorkville. That's been That's around been forever. What do you mean now? Oh, it's still here. Where you been? It, it's still here. Stella. I know it's still there. I used to go there. <laughs> Have you ever been there, Bruce? Yes. It's Very not nice. the same I, as I it used to be, and, it, and, it, and it's better if you go in the week because then there's a, the crowd that you want to talk to, whereas on the weekends it's all these friggin' poor posers from Woodbridge who show up there and they go, oh, we're at Hemingway's. Okay, now he let's get back to this movie thing yeah, here because okay. you're, Bruce, <laughs> you're saying the movie's called The World of Hemingway. Is it a yes. f and it's I in Italian, is it? No, they're gonna, it's in Italian now, but they'll have subtitles they're going to be translating. Okay, into it's a, yeah. okay, but it's being made in Italian? Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and it's a f is it a full-length feature? Uh, right now, it's an hour, so he might be changing it to full-length. Yeah. And it's, what is it? A, is it a, bio, a biography of a Ernest biopic? Hemingway? Or yeah, it's sort of like a, a mystery, because H Hemingway apparently uh, committed suicide, like a gunshot. And blew his head off, right? Mm. And, and after he left Cuba, he went to his hometown. I forget, Ketchum, I think it is. And he blew his head off, right? Poor guy. Very sad. He, he drank a lot, us, I heard. Yeah. Pardon me? D he drank a lot, right? Yeah, but you know, like, if you went through what he did, like the wounds, and he, was, he went to Africa, two plane crashes. I wow. mean, the guy was like, and how could he write all these? You know, if you, if you really read about the guy, the guy's truly amazing, you know? Well... He obviously had, he suffered a lot of trauma in his life, and he was still able to write and create, and obviously he was not <coughs> meant to die at those yeah. times. But he blamed his writing on his, on his mother, because what happened was his, his father was a physician, and his mother was, um, I, I, exactly, I don't know exactly what she did, but she was in concerts and things, and taught him how to play the cello when he was younger, and he hated the cello. And then later he said, if it wasn't, if the cello gave him, I guess, the stability to know how to, so he, he blames his good writing on his cello mm. playing. Now, uh, the film has so far been done in Italian. It's going to go into English subtitles for yeah. the benefit of us. And <laughs> you are on your way to San Francisco okay, to now, complete. Okay, now the problem is now, what we're doing is, okay, now we have some really good people online. Okay, uh, Patty Solomon, mm -hmm. who's going to be the creative director. So she recommended L.A. Mm -hmm. because she also has this other friend who's very good, Jamie Gomez, who's going to be getting all the camera work together. And he's been working with the same people for 30 years. Mm -hmm. So and that's going to be a really good thing. So we're changing from San Francisco now to Los Angeles. Oh, so you're going to go to L.A. Which is a better... Mm -hmm. And plus, um, oh, I'm just stretching. <laughs> I, I kind of like LA too because I sort of know a lot more people in LA yeah. than San Francisco. And, and you also know a lady that I got to know recently, um, Liz Str Str Skrzynski. She's oh, yeah, a yeah, writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We she, had a very interesting conversation. She's putting together a book. Right. She interviewed me for that book. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it's all about Yorkville, and she has yeah. some really amazing stories in there about how Jim Morrison was first brought to Toronto. And CTV is doing a special 
on all of the things about the hotels in Toronto, which I think is really funny because you're not allowed to go to the roof of the Royal York without security. And somehow Jim Morrison ended up on the roof drinking and partying with, I guess, some friends or part of the band. Who knows? But it's just all these interesting little stories and historical tidbits. Yeah, I like, I like Liz. She's really down to earth. Yeah. And she was reading me some of the uh, entries in that book, and she's got the kid who brought... Jim Morrison to Toronto, and I've put her in touch with some people who were part of the scene in Yorkville at the time as well. Now, did she she interviewed you for this book? Yes. <laughs> she yeah, were, about you, were you involved in the Yorkville scene? Yeah, back in I, those I days? played Yorkville Village at the El Patio. I was a house band there with a band called Mana when I was 15 years old. I found out, like, I thought it was when I was 16, but Jim Bartucci was six months older than me. So, yeah, I was the house band there when I was 15. What year would that have been? Uh, well, I was born in 52, so you do 67. the math. 67. <laughs> you were there in the summer love, yeah. right? Speaking of summer love, can you imagine a 15-year-old rock star playing in Yorkville Village? And then after, like, remember we talked about it before? And then across the street, you go, go to see, like, all these, you know. Oh, they're doing an interview about Jackie Shane, too. Did you know that? Again, yes. on CBC. And, and I used to, he was, like, Jackie Shane was, like, unbelievable. And like, but he didn't care. Like the guy was just in those days to be a Jackie Shane. Yeah. Like you really had to have. I'm not going to mention that words, but it starts with a B. Balls. <laughs> ends with an, yeah, exactly. Like this guy Balls was like okay. right on. Huh? Oh. Sorry. Balls is okay. Oh, oh wait. Is it? So this guy was what? <laughs> like I. So I don't know Jackie. Oh, Shane. you got to No, this guy. If you don't know him, you're going to find out. What's about him. the deal? Tell us the oh, deal. Oh, forget about him. We're talking about. The world of Hemingway. No, right. but ja Jackie Shane was like un unbelievable, right? So, anyways, so he used to be like walking around, and he like, and when he played, I, I forget the place he played at. Like, it was just like lineups to go see him play. But what was he, a guitar player or what? A singer. What singer. was the club? Uh, I think I forget the name. Yellow door. I'm bad with names. There was like Sapphire or something. There was or? something. I don't know if it was. <coughs> it wasn't the pilot. It was something to do with a lighthouse, but I can't remember what the name of the club oh, was. Oh, across the street from where I played. You're talking about the riverboat? I'm boat? talking about, yeah, the riverboat yeah. was one of them. And what was the other place that where, was where, really um, good? The Minor Bird? Where, um, the Minor Bird, I remember. Did Bobby Lee come on the show yet? Bobby Lee? And the Scepters, remember? Like he was house band at the at I don't the minor remember. Bird. Have we had Bobby Lee Justice here? No. Oh, wait. You got to uh, get him no. on. No? Okay. I think so. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, like Hemingway, that bar was in Hemingway before, so that's how I know that bar from the Yorkville days, right? Ah, yeah. uh, that was quite a scene in those days. Now, Bruce, obviously yeah. there was something that happened there because your life took you through that whole 60s Yorkville thing, and then you ended up doing the music for the world of Hemingway. Somehow yeah. those things are connected. Yeah, yeah it's called um, a song Revolution that I wrote in Cuba, and that's how I met Giuseppe. <coughs> was... Um, I was going to Cuba a lot, and I, I got to know. Actually, if you what's that Winnipega thing or what? what Wikipedia. Yeah, if you go and you see it, you'll see a picture of a statue of Irving, er, er, Ernest? Ernest Hemingway, and behind it you'll see a picture of Fidel and Ernest. I was actually in that bar before they put the statue, and I have a photo of me with my arm cool. around. Cool. Oh, well, that's you know? great. But now they have the statue, so you can't do that. So you're. So anyway, so I met Giuseppe a yeah. year ago. Where? In Cuba? No, like, no, I met him through my revolution song. And then I said, well, you know, like, I really like Cuba, but well, I'm doing a film about it. So he sent me the script, sort of like cut and paste in English. And I was really fascinated by going, this is unbelievable. Like, it really was. And, you know, I don't read books, right? Mm -hmm. But like, this, like, took me, blew me away. I had to read the whole thing, right? It was just a script, though, right? Of yeah, the movie? of the movie. About and I'm going, Cuba. No, the movie, uh, the, the world, world of Hemingway. Yeah, okay, okay. and I'm going. This is great. Can I do music for it? He says, Sure, no problem. Yeah. So that's how we got to meet. And then, and then what happened was, um, yeah, that's how we met. Okay. So uh, when did Ricky Gordon enter into it? Well, what happened was then. Now I'm going. Okay, fine. I'm going. Like, okay, fine. Like, I, I, I saw Ricky Gordon and I saw his work that he was doing. And I'm going. And, he, and he's a church-going person, right? So I'm going like, yeah, this is cool, you know? Like, uh, 
why don't we have the movie, like have it, like we'll write songs. And since he really involved in the church and I saw the group and everything else, I'm going, so it twigged my mind. I'm going, like for an ending, we should have Ricky, we'll write some songs with him. So I introduced him to him because of the church thing, right? Because I go by karma, right? And I felt, yeah, this would be really great, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll have a nice at the end of the movie, like a choir backing up. We'll write the songs. We'll have a lead singer and make it like a really good event, you know, like a a really good finale, right? So that's how... So I how did it. you get the backing for this movie then? Just based No, Giuseppe. On, Giuseppe got the backing for right. the movie. Okay. And, and he Giuseppe's already had the contact. Giuseppe's been in TV and films, and, and he's wrote books, and the guy's very talented. Okay. Okay, you're going to have to uh, pass me his information, because I'd like to... Miss to, Actress? Yeah, well, besides that. <laughs> uh, because Liz uh, is looking for backing for her book, and I think it should come out. Okay. The book is going to be amazing. Uh, on Yorkville and the club Actually, scene. Actually, that's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. <coughs> and then I'm going to be doing, well, we're not finished yet, but at the end I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing. Okay. Now, you, you've... you um, I'm really excited about this. I'm excited too, but when I, I want to Paris, really France, know. When I go to Paris, France, I meet Giuseppe, <laughs> and the guy's so cool. Like, you know, he's 73 years old, and the guy can, like, walk, out walk like anybody, you know? The guy is he like, outwalked you, right? No kidding. <laughs> He's who, used to it. That's what it is. Yeah. Europeans, you know. Yeah, I know. Like the, the stamina of that man. S Unbelievable. Stamina. Oh, is that how you say it? Yes. And then what happened was <clears throat> this other guy, Morris, who's really cool. I met him through Facebook because he's, he's really into Jimi Hendrix, right? Mm. So I'm saying, saying, okay, we're doing a film in Paris, and he lives in Paris. So then the guy was nice enough. He picked me up at the airport. He helped us with the film, like, and he showed me around the oldest part of Paris. So, I mean, it was like, it was like so magical. What's the oldest part of Paris? I know. You have to be friends with Morris on Facebook. And he'll well, why can't I be friends with you? I'm already friends with you on Facebook. Just tell me the the information. Well, Come I don't on. know. It's like where Picasso went yeah. and all those people. No, I want to know. The oldest part of Paris is out in the country. No, no. It was in the city. It was in the city. I'm just kidding. You're it was in the city. Chain, let's, not, let's not confuse the issue until she finishes her drink. Then we can play with it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, there's been bigger men than you who tried to play with me. I know. I've heard that before. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> bigger and God knows. <laughs> Okay, so Bruce, why are you yeah. so excited about this this movie? Because if, if you read the script, yeah. which I did, like it was, it blew me away, right? Okay, so why did it blow you away? What was it about it? Just the intrigue, like the the. Um, oh, it's like. Is it the plot? The plot, yeah, what because happened? you're talking about, like, like the KGB, CIA. Let's face it, like Hemingway's... So it's like a spy well, kind of movie almost. Well, when Hemingway was there, he was there when Batista was there. Yeah, and, and that was Fidel before. Castro overthrew Batista. Yes. So then he got to be friends with Fidel Castro. So that in itself is intriguing. And that's well, going to be part of the movie too, right? Mm. And mm. what happened with when I was playing my guitar parts, what happened with me was I had to figure out like 60 songs, right? So <clears throat> the guitar that I played the night before, I just tuned it and I played one song. And I figured, okay, I'll use this guitar for the filming, right? So now when I go to tune the guitar for the filming... I tune it and I, and, I, and I go, this guitar is not going to cut it. Like, what am I going to do, right? So I'm thinking, okay, what I'll do is I'll tune the guitar perfectly for the first song, and then I'll sort of play a raunchy song for the second song. So the guitar to tune, who cares, right? So now, so I tune the, and I play the first song, and I'm serenading this girl who, I'm, who, I, who I love. And the KGB guy is in the room. Like, and I, I'm not supposed to know he's KGB, right? And he's sort of dancing and stuff like that. So I play the first song. And then the second song, I had to just sort of fake it. But I think it worked out okay. Mm -hmm. Because it is supposed to be in the 60s. And how many guitars were in tune in the 60s, do you know? I don't know. Yeah. I thought it sounded pretty good. <laughs> 60. Come on. Admit it. Music from back then, 60s and oh, 70s. Oh, no kidding. Is what, yeah. is what is the are the classics there's nothing yeah. so actually so the guitar being out of tune for the second song actually i think really worked for the film because you don't want it to like cut and paste and stream you know like really nice it has to be natural or else forget it well you've had some um, amazing places to be in for the filming of this film i mean I, I when you told me you were had just come back from paris 
and I love that city. <laughs> I was really, really thinking, oh, you're lucky, lucky guy. It's such a wonderful place to be and a wonderful time. The food time. is great. Oh, I know. Even going into a supermarket and, and getting, you know, like takeout, I mean, it's just unbelievable. Did you find in Paris that the uh, people were, f uh, you know, they, they have a <coughs> reputation for being not so friendly? Did you find that? I didn't uh, find that. Well, the thing is, they're more um, into coffee and that type of... Conversation and yeah, coffee yeah, and lounging. Yeah. So you, you get, uh, when you're in a bar, it's a whole different thing, right? And then when you're doing a movie, like, yeah. they really open up, you know. So the, the movie itself was filmed where? Did you go to Cuba to film it? No, no, no. The, uh, the movie's been, right now, Giuseppe's in Italy filming part right. of the movie. Okay. Because some of it takes in place Poland. in the Second World War. So they That's would it? have to... Well, you said he was there. No, he was there, but doesn't mean the movie got taken place. But No, but the idea. I'm yeah, not yeah, saying... It's blah, 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 blah. Gi listen, <laughs> Giuseppe has his shit together big time. Like, he's got it, in, like, unbelievable. Like, because Hemingway's all over the world. Mm -hmm. And just think, he wrote for the Toronto Star, and one of his sons was actually born in Toronto? When did he write for the Star? Uh, when he went to uh, one of the wars, I guess maybe the Second World War, he went back to Paris and he was a correspondent. He did 88 articles for the Toronto Which Star. Which is what I was trying to say, that yeah. it takes the filming in Italy because the movie takes place during the Second right. World War. Right. You're, you're trying to tell me that it does. <coughs> yeah, and plus, <coughs> plus the Shakespearean, I'm trying to tell you whatever I can think I'm going to tell you. You, you, <laughs> you don't even <laughs> know what you're going to tell me. That's what I like about you. <laughs> So, and, and one of the places, too, in Paris, he used to go to the Shakespearean bookstore, and the, at that time he didn't have much money, and they allowed him to take the books and read, you know? That's cool. Like, yeah. Well, uh... But I think most of his transcripts are still in Cuba. And 60,000, I think. Wow. So there's a lot of information there that, yeah. you know, should come out. Maybe somebody will uh, expand on that whole idea. Yeah. And make because I always thought like I always thought he always oh, just a writer, but when I think about all the wounds in the war, uh, the plane crashes in Africa, like and you know, and then was to he go also to a Cuba, pilot? Being when Batista was there, he was there when Batista was there, and Fidel. That's was when the mob time. was in Cuba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Batista days. Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing that in Godfather. There you go. That's where I g I learned. <laughs> yes, I mean. So uh, there you go. Well, uh, is there, um, if people want to know more about this, is there obviously an IMDb on it? Well, look, right now, good question. Just Google my name, Bruce Pallet, on on. Wikipedia? Google. No, <laughs> no on, on Google. Google my name, hello. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> How do you do that, Bruce? <laughs> <laughs> Mention my name, you'll get a good seat. So, uh, Bruce, okay, so now what I'm going to do now, since you're getting rid of me again, I'm going to, Giuseppe is setting up this concert for, because now um, Hemingway will be dead 50 years. I think he died um, June or July 2nd. So I'm going so to be going. So there's an anniversary? So I'm going to be going to Paris uh, and then to Poland to, we're doing a, a major concert for, uh, Wow. For Hemingway, yeah. And also, I'm, I've been, uh, when I went to Paris also, I connected with people where I'm going to be doing um, a four-country tour. So far, I have two countries lined up, Italy and Poland. And we're in the midst of lining up Germany and, um, what's that other country? I don't know, Spain? there's a ton. Oh, no. Not, Not England. Spain. Not England, but anyways. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to be doing in June. And before that, because of the, the change with um, Patty Solomon, who I love dearly, like she's just been putting it together great for L.A., mm -hmm. we're going to delay the filming, I think, till the end of um, well, that's too bad. March. No, and that's great, because it's going to be done, like, really, like, the way it should be done, you know? Well, but at least you're not delaying it till June, and then that I can't, would... because I have to... Go back. But the problem is we're gonna we're supposed to submit it to Cannes Film Festival, so I don't know how he's gonna do that. So submit part of it. Well, that's a real exciting project, uh, Bruce. Yeah, that's it is. I'm just, really just I'm really to happen from a I know, chance like encounter. I'm really bar. pumped up. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, and uh, it, no, I guess uh, 
<coughs> let's give out some web information. Maybe people want to get in touch with you. Maybe they want you to write some music for their film or just Google my name, Bruce Pal. It's simple. It's all there. Okay, Bruce P A L A I T. I, yeah, because right? then you can get the Facebook and get like it's, it's like, all there. I like Google because it's simple and like it's yeah. fast. Yeah, I'm gonna look you up on Wikipedia. Okay, good. Because <laughs> I he should. He said the I movie's should. on there. I should. No, you the never movie's know. not on there. Ernest Hemingway is on there. Oh, Ernest well, you, who? you see, you confused yeah, the hell out of me. And how do you pronounce that name again? <laughs> because Spelling, you can... Speaking of pronounce, how do you spell it? What, Her Hemingway? No, Wickle, whatever it is. W-I-K-I-P-E-D-I-A. There you All go. Right, and then the people can go, Ernest Hemingway, and they can see the guy is totally... Am and how he survived? I don't know. Like, the guy is... If you read about him... Fascinating life. All right. So when can we look forward to seeing this film, Bruce? When's it going to be done? Giuseppe. <laughs> Giuseppe. Let me phone Giuseppe uh, right now. Donde está? <laughs> well, maybe this summer? It should be finished because, oh. yeah, because we're doing the, it'll be finished because of his 50th anniversary. So it'll cool. be finished. And it has so. to be submitted to Khan. Yeah, and that might be a problem now. But I'd rather have a good movie than, you know, half-ass. Exactly. You know? It'd be, so who cares about cons? I mean, you know. Well, it'd be nice to win it. <laughs> it's always next year. Yeah. And you never know who you're going to run into at the bar in... Uh, Con? Spain. Yeah. No, we're in Con. Okay, Bruce, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Love you. All right. Okay, that's it for Liquid Lunch. Thanks, Stella. Thanks, Hugh. It was, that was fun. a nice interview. Yeah. yeah. Did you enjoy that? I'm shaking. So I enjoyed it. Okay. You got to be nervous. All right. <laughs> well... <laughs> you know,